Hi, and welcome to another chaotic vlog, I'm sure. <laughs> Today's Friday, April 12th. We, we, I don't know what's happening this weekend. Um, unfortunately, my husband's grandfather passed away, so Mike and I will be traveling to Pittsburgh for services and to spend time with his family. Caitlin and I have a loft event on Sunday. Today, so today is, I'm going to be focusing a lot on preparing to leave. Um, preparing to leave town, preparing to be off work for a few days. I need to wrap up some stuff before I leave. It's a really big, big week next week for my job, but fortunately I'm able to take the time off that I need, which I'm really grateful for because I know not every business is like that. I need to really get a move on cleaning this house. It has been neglected for weeks. It looks terrible. I wouldn't say it's dirty, but it's just cluttered beyond belief. We just have dumping grounds all over the house and I need to get that sorted. And also if we're gonna be leaving town, I cannot stand to leave a dirty house. I also wanna do it just to take something off Mike's plate. He is very helpful around the house and he actually does most of the cooking. I try to do most of the cleaning, but I just want, when he comes home from work today, I know he's had a hard day uh, and it's, it's sad, it's a loss. Even though we were expecting it, it's still, something that he's gonna have to deal with and I know how hard that can be. So I just wanna take whatever pressure I can off of him and make him feel like there's nothing here to worry about, everything is fine, I've got it under control. So I also need to figure out what I'm doing for dinner. That being said, I wanted to update you on a few things in my life. I have been very open in the past about issues that I've had, GI issues that I've had. And about a year ago, I started having really awful stomach pains and bloating like you would not believe and I don't want to get into the whole big story of it if you follow us on Instagram you've probably seen it basically I was feeling like garbage all day every day and I looked pregnant um, I got a, an appointment with a really great doctor in the area and she helped me and said I think you have SIBO so I'm gonna give you this antibiotic don't worry it's not like a an antibiotic that you're thinking of that's gonna cause a yeast infection. It's very targeted to the bacteria that's grow overgrowing in my small intestine. So SIBO stands for small intestinal bacteria, bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. I'll put a link down below. And I took these medication, I took this medication for two weeks. I drastically altered the way that I eat. I've been doing, I was doing a low FODMAP diet, um, which is really difficult but worth it and you can still eat lots of great food. So it's just getting over that. Oh my God, but I want ice cream or oh my God, but I really want a piece of bread. You just have to get over it because if you've had SIBO or if you have any kind of GI issues and you know that there's a food that you're eating that's triggering that kind of pain, you just have to think about that pain and then you're like, yep, no, nope, don't need it. So nothing is worth it. Um, so I got all of that sorted at the end of last year and I was feeling really good before the end, like last fall and I was feeling really good and then I got cocky and I was like oh you know I really don't need to uh, stick to this low FODMAP diet as much as I was I'm sure I'm fine um, but SIBO is usually a sign of an underlying issue it could be IBS it could be Crohn's it could be a multitude of things and unfortunately that requires a lot of testing and I did have testing in the beginning um, lots of blood work I, I ruled out you know, I ruled out a significant amount of things that could be wrong. I had a CT scan with contrast, etc., And I was feeling better with the medication and with the change in diet, so I know it was working. Um, but SIBO can come back, and that's what my doctor had told me when I went to see her in December. She was like, don't be discouraged if it comes back. We'll just do another round of the antibiotics. Hopefully we can get you sorted. And I was like, okay, sure. Well, then a few weeks ago, I started feeling all of those symptoms that I know all too well. And it did discourage me, even though she told me don't let it, it's hard because it affects the way you live your life. I, it makes me really sad. I don't, I am never one of those people who has to like fake a smile. Um, Cause I'm generally very happy and very positive. And that's what I find myself doing when I'm having this kind of pain. It's hard to explain. It doesn't matter what I do. I can't get that bloating, bursting gas feeling to go away. I can burp, I can fart, I can poop. It doesn't matter. So I called her 
and immediately she sent in another prescription for me to pick up my medication. I got that, I started it, I'm on day three or four now. I have to take it for two straight weeks and I'm back on the low FODMAP train. So fortunately, I, do, I did feel a little bit of discomfort this morning, but it's nothing like what I was dealing with. And the medicine that I'm on is called Zyfaxan, X-I-F-A-X-A-N. And I take one tablet three times a day. I know that this is a really popular medicine for people with SIBO. I'm sure it's used to treat other GI things, but I do really like it. Uh, it sucks that I have to take a medication. I'm very against that in most cases. I just don't like to take medicine. And I'm allergic to a lot of medication, so this is fine. I don't have to worry about getting a yeast infection. Etc. Etc. Because I know antibiotic, you're like, oh my god, yeast infection. Which brings me to my next point. I'm wondering if I'm having another bout of SIBO because I was an on, I was on an antibiotic for another thing, and I read in this book called The Bloated Belly Whisperer, which I will talk about in a minute, that if you take antibiotics, it can sometimes mess with your gut, and then you can have SIBO all over again. And I had BV, which if you don't know what BV is, it's bacterial vaginosis. <laughs> I've got bacteria everywhere. Um, and that was also another thing that I was like, are you kidding me? I have an STI. I have an STI. Um, not an STD, but an STI. And if you know me at all, you know that I'm married and I've been monogamous for 12 years-ish. So I was like, what the fuck? how do I have BV? And my doctor is amazing. And she was like, you know, before she even did the swab, she was like, oh, I'm sure you have BV. <laughs> Cause I told her what my symptoms were. And she was right. It is just, your floras and your faunas are all mixed up in there and that can happen. So I got that sorted. I took two days of antibiotics for that, which was like a pretty intense course cause it was eight pills over two days. And I took a Diflucan so I wouldn't get a yeast infection. And then shortly after that, that's when I was like, oh my God, this pain is just not going away. And so I'm wondering if the two are related. So BV, um, SIBO, Mike's grandfather, someone else in my family who I love dearly is going through some medical issues. Um, it's just like, End of March, all of April so far has just been hard, but I'm not gonna let it get me down. I'm just gonna keep powering through and be positive. I started going to therapy, hallelujah, for the first time in probably eight years. So I'm back on that wagon. Kudos to Caitlin for setting such a good example for the past year. So I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get mind, body, soul, happy, healthy, happy, healthy, true. <laughs> um, but just like, prioritizing my health because I am getting older. I am noticing things that are falling apart that I never would have worried about in my early 20s or when I was a teenager. So I just wanna get everything right. I want to stick to this new diet. I'm, I'm not calling it a diet because it's gonna to have to be a lifestyle. No sense in calling it a diet. I did realize in my first go around with the low FODMAP diet that onions were a really big trigger for me. So I can't have onions or onion powder and it really freaking sucks because I love them so much and that's a huge source of flavor for most everything. So I have to be really selective when we go out to eat and I have to ask. Um, and I'm sure I'm gonna eat some onions every once in a while, but anyhow, when I was noticing all of the pain, I found it to be perfect timing because I had found this li this book at the library by my work called The Bloated Belly Whisperer. And at the time that I checked it out, I wasn't having the gas pains really, um, or the bloating, but it, this is something that still always concerns me and interests me and I wanna just like make sure I'm taking care of myself and doing the right thing. And so I checked it out with the intention to get around to reading it. Um, and then when I started having my symptoms, I cracked into this baby and I finished it in a day. The whole book isn't applicable to every single person, but what is great is that there is a test called the Bloated Belly Whisperer Quiz, and you answer all these questions honestly, and then you tally up your scores, and depending on how many circles you've filled in from each column, it kind of directs you toward what chapters in the book she thinks would be most applicable to you. So for me, it was 
G, columns G and H were very high. So G was small intestinal bacterial overgrow overgrowth, which is SIBO, and H was carbohydrate intolerances. So I read those chapters and when you're reading the symptoms of people in the book, she's a nutritionist, by the way. It, is she a nutritionist? Da, 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 da. Yes, she is. And she says, like, I'm not a doctor, but I've worked with doctors to kind of create this book, and my patients have had really great success with the way that I treat things, blah, blah, blah. So as I'm reading the SIBO thing, I'm like, yep, 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 it's 100% me. I know that's what I have. I've had it before. So anyhow, I read the book. I like self-diagnosed myself. I called my doctor. She's like, yes, sounds like SIBO. Here's a script. So I'm dealing with that. Highly recommend this book. I've recommended it to a bunch of people on Instagram already because y'all have gut issues as well. It's very common and no one really talks about it because it's like taboo. Oh, I fart or I burp or I look bloated all the time. I was waking up looking pregnant and even Mike told me that. And he is a gem of a man and he would never say, baby, you're looking a little pregnant, but I would be like, look at my stomach and tell me this doesn't look pregnant. You would be lying if you said it doesn't. And he was like, you're right, it looks pregnant, but I'm not, mm, mm So I'm dealing with all that. I need to get this house together. That was a really long story and I'm sorry if you don't really like life updating things, but that's what's going on. I can't edit any of that out. <laughs> also, if you've been staring at this, I apologize. I self tan myself and I wash my hands a lot. And so my wrists and hands, wow, especially this one, are drastically different color than the rest of my body. I need to try to scrub it off because it's looking like a hot damn mess. I feel like there was something else. Went to therapy, yay. SIBO, boo, BV, boo, but that's gone, yay. You know, just just living the dream over here with all my diseases, all my bacterias. Uh, all this to say, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, A, I highly recommend taking care of your mental health. B, I highly recommend seeing a GI specialist if you are having issues. Uh, the good doctors have a wait list and I faced that in the beginning, but it was worth it. I uh, also recommend seeing a young doctor for GI issues. That was told to me by a dietitian friend of mine, Courtney, and by actually by multiple people. Everyone always said like, find a good GI doctor, but make sure they're young because so much research comes out and older doctors just aren't as up to date with current findings. So the, the woman I'm seeing is very young and very thorough but also efficient like i don't feel like i'm wasting my time i don't feel like she orders all these unnecessary tests uh it is a possibility that i could have to have a colonoscopy and endoscopy at some point if things aren't resolved and this is a recurring thing for me um yeah find a good doctor don't wait uh but don't be embarrassed if this is happening to you because so many people are dealing with it and there are so many great resources online I have found a lot of great people on Instagram who create low FODMAP friendly recipes, um, low carb recipes, because again, when I took that test, it was like, oh, you could have carb intolerances. And then if you have BV, don't be ashamed because anyone can get it. Like I've had that same, <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say that. I'm not even sure. I don't know how it happens, but it's a real pain when you have to deal with it. But you know, it is what it is. At least it wasn't something worse. It's totally treatable. If it comes back, it comes back. She gave me refills, hallelujah. So that's what's going on. Don't be embarrassed by any of these things because they happen to way more people than you think. And I'm just one lonely bitch putting it all on the internet. If you are curious about my shirt, this is from Caitlin. It was a Christmas gift. It is uh, Starry Night, Van Gogh Starry Night in the background and NASA, which are two of my very big interests. So I just think it's so funny that they make a shirt that combines the two. And then my star necklace, I get a lot of questions about this. It's from a little boutique in Baltimore called Brightside Boutique. It's very inexpensive, I think it was under $20. But I wear it every day, I even wear it in the shower. I'm sure my neck is gonna turn green and fall off, but you know, at least it'll look cute. But I've never been able to find anything online about it either. So it's got, I think it's got five crescent moons. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five crescent moons 
and it's just very dainty and delicate and I like I said I wear it every day so if you're looking for something like this I try to do a search on Etsy and other websites and I can find crescent moon necklaces but I can't find crescent moon necklaces with multiple moons on them <sighs> let us know what you're getting into in the comments below we would love to hear it so thank you for listening to my updates uh, let me know in the comments if you've experienced any of these things I'm sure, I know I'm not alone, but uh, sometimes it's just, like I said on Instagram one day, like if you wanna swap shit stories, I am game, I am down, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk shit. Uh, we'll shit talk. Yeah, okay, I'll see you in a bit. You're a sweet bear. Oh, stretch it out. You stretch it out. Grampy. You just sleep all day, huh? Good, I'm feeling better. This big baby just came in the mail, so I'm gonna try some of this stuff on. I'm looking for very specific items and then some not so specific items. I got lured in by the bathing suits, which is never good. Oh, I can already tell it looks like a really fun order. It's quite difficult to film this by myself, but this dress is a flared sleeve wrap dress in rainbow and Caitlin also ordered it I think it's a little too low cut although I don't mind showing that much cleavage but there's no option for a clasp here I know I could always put a stitch in but I don't want to have to I also feel like it's just it's quite clowny for me um, and this is the kind of fabric that's gonna like really cling to your every movement and shape. It's just not what I wanted it to be in a rainbow dress. You know what I mean? Like it, it just looks a little like a clown tent. This I love. This is the floral midi dress with shirred sleeves. Um, I don't feel like it's translating as nice on camera as it is in person. I like the cinched waist, I like the button detail. These are functional buttons, so you could go as low or as high as you want. I just think it looks nice. I love this, I love this color. Uh, it's just like an easy throw it on dress. It does have a slit, so it makes that easy for walking, but I do like it because it's long enough to cover my knees, which are one of my problem areas. Wow. <laughs> That is bright. This is like highlighter yellow. This is the misguided lace layered mini dress. Mini dress or, yeah, mini dress. Um, it has this stretchy panel underneath, which I really appreciate. I hate when the underneath layer does not have any give to it. I like the length of the sleeves. It hits just above the elbow, which I think is pretty flattering, especially if you're like me and you don't really love the top of your arms. It's see-through all through here, so I would have to probably be braless. I can't zip it all the way by myself, but um, again, see-through right here. I will say I do think this is very different from any, anything that I have. Um, it's a bit more girly and frilly than a lot of stuff because of this additional layering, but this additional layer helps hide the little pooch. So uh, with, a, with a nice tan, I think this would look really beautiful and a bold lip, like a coral or like orangey red. I don't know, I, I have ideas for this dress. It's a maybe, I'm not gonna write it off. It was also $22, so you can't really beat that. I do think it's kind of fun. It's definitely different. If you're going to a neon party, maybe this is the dress for you. <laughs> this is the front satin midi dress in leopard print. It has like this beautiful kimono style sleeve that's not, it's not too big. Um, it has a layer underneath. Again, it's stretchy, so you could easily walk in it. I do love the split detail. 
um, just kind of sexy when you're walking. I do think this is a touch big. I could have used a size down. Oh, definitely. Um, but this was the only size they had left online. And I'm really bummed because I love it so much. I think this is super fun. Okay, this I did not have all the way zipped up because it's tricky to do by myself, but this was a dress that was incorrectly sent to me over the holidays, and I fell in love with it, but it was too big. Now it was on sale, and they had my size, so I ordered it, and I love it. This color red is my power color. I love it so much. I love to wear it on my nails, my lips, outfits, and this is a bit boobish, but... Ooh, it will get tighter and more contained after it's zipped up all the way. I love the eyelet detail. I love the bell sleeve. Um, I also love how this panel here is a little bit sheer, so you can kind of see a little bit of skin, but not too much. And then I also love how it's kind of fitted at the perfect spot around my hips, um, and then it flares out. So I think that's a flattering look. It kind of makes my butt look nice. I just, I just love it so much, so I'm glad that I got it. Again, it won't be as once I, once I get her all locked in there, but this was a great find for me. I just loved it so much over the holidays and I'm glad that I was able to get it on sale. Um, this is a one-piece swimsuit by the brand New Look. It's color black, pink, and red, but I thought it was very Barbie meets Wendy Peppercorn. It's very high. It's a very high cut on the sides. I do have underwear on and I just got a wax so it like ripped off my spray tan and that's not a very good look, but that's what's happening. So here's a, here's a better look at it. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. It has a very low back. I don't really wanna show my butt. <laughs> so this is what the back looks like. It's very low, as you can see, like my butt is probably five or six inches below that. Um, but I do like it, it's different. Definitely plain, but fun, and I'm an idiot. I had tried on the smaller bathing suit thinking it was the larger one. This is one size up, and I will say, it feels longer in the torso, which is what I need, because I do have a very long torso. I often have to buy tall bathing suits, but I do think this one's better. <laughs> it feels less like it's riding up my whole crotch. It just feels like I have more room to like work with, you know what I'm saying? So again, everything else is the same, but this is a size 10, the other one was a size eight, and it just felt like it was making me a little shorter than I needed to be. So I do like this one, I'm gonna keep this one, return the other. The last bathing suit I got is this scalloped detailed one piece. It does have a little bit of see-through mesh here, and the scallop detail goes all down here, which I think in certain, like at a certain angle I'm like, can you tell that it's a scallop detail or does it just look like a wonky bathing suit? I don't really know, but I do love it. Um, it does have a like a bra clip on the inside, which I was not able to get by myself, which is this bit that's hanging out here. I can't, I can't mess with it right now. I don't think I'd be able to get it on or off. It does have removable straps, so I think once that bra clip is clasped, you would be able to wear it as a strapless number, which I think could also be cute, but until that is clasped in the middle like a bra, I feel like I would fall out of it. I don't know. I'm on the fence, but I think I like it. It's super cute. I'm back in my normal clothes. The last thing I picked up that I wanted to show you was this cute headband. Um, I like the look of uh, like a tied scarf or a turban on your head, but I have a really tiny head and the ones with the elastic in the back don't stay on. So this is made of a headband material. I don't know. Again, I would have to do something with like the front, figure out how to style it, but I really love it. I think it's adorable, super fun. And then, you know, when my hair is longer, or if I let it get longer, I think it'll look great with that too. Some fun stuff, some things I'll be keeping, some things I'll definitely be returning, but overall, not terrible. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to our channel. We've already lived a whole day and we still have a whole other day. <laughs> Bitch. I will not wait. It's yellow. Um, we have a whole nother day to live. So far today, Danielle, what'd what, you do this what, morning? What, what, what'd you do this morning, Danielle? Oh my God. Well, uh, I woke up at 3:45 because there was 
a hole in my gutter and the drip, 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 drip from the rain woke me the fuck up and I hung out onto the roof from my bedroom window at 3.45 in the morning to try to this. fix it. And so I've been awake since then and I'm, I oh, I didn't get anything to go. I need coffee. I went to a 10.30 a.m. date. If you follow us on Instagram, you oh probably God, were following along, right. Uh, the dude did not show up until nearly 11.30. He knew damn well that I had a 12.15 Hard stop. brunch. Um, and when I asked him why he was late, assuming it was because of the, there was like a, a foot race in Baltimore. <laughs> What the fuck is it called? Running? It was a running. It was the Fest. soul of the city. It was a 10K. A 10K. There was a 10K throughout the city that sort of blocked off a bunch of it. I assumed that's why he was late. When asked about it, he informed me that it was oh, yeah. because he forgot to take his multivitamin and he was sluggish this morning. He should have lied. Beach. Um, so yeah, so obviously not a promising date. And I went straight from the date because my BFF over here picked me up and we went to a brunch with some amazing women. Really amazing. Talking women. about future events oh, looks nice. for the city. It does look nice. Oh, I like her hair too. She's cute. Um, talking about the future of some events for the city and we're very excited. So excited. Very ex inspired. It's a ton of good energy. She picked a great group of women to sort of um, put it together with I don't know I almost cried I like, wouldn't expect anything less from her no never but I we I almost cried I felt it well well enough and I had to mm -hmm. tell myself to swallow it swallow it because yeah. we I didn't want to cry at a restaurant um, so now we are on our way to do club brewing if you're not familiar it's about 15 minutes north of the city 20 Five. 20 Five. We're 20 minutes away. Um, and our friend Mads works there, so she always gives us the hot tip on all the fun events that are happening. Today is Sour Fest. They, oh, I wanted you, I want you to look at the flavors. So they have flavors, pina colada, sweet lemon turmeric, turmeric, unicorn farts, creamsicle, double raspberry, peach sherbet, mezcal barrel, strawberry passion fruit, spicy daiquiri. Okay, so we are leaving Dewclaw. We tried a couple things. Yeah, we were there for an hour. Do you want to, Daniel? Do you want to tell everybody the special guest that we ran into? We walked into one of the main rooms where the band was playing, and as we were walking in, Caitlin did one of these, uh, uh, and so I knew she saw someone. Yeah. And she was like, "I think it's Mr. Mutz." <laughs> and guess what? It was Mr. Mutz. <laughs> and that's how I greeted him. He was. Hi, Mr. Mutz. Literally at the brewery, his friends were cousins with the people that were playing in the band. We all oh. chatted. Oh my God, Caitlin, I, he thinks he wants to look at you the filming that video. The man next to us has a tiny ass penis because he's got a lifted it's, custom. It's probably six inches lifted. Maybe not six, but it's a lot. It's got the toe hitch. Sorry about your dick. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God, look at all the shit it's got on it. Anyway, so we ran into Mr. Motts and we caught up. I thought it was funny that he called me out that he's been like trying to get me to go on a date. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Hmm. Funny how that works. What are you gonna do? He's been trying. Wow, this is like the wild, wild west of parking hose. Oh you, you did it, so I'm gonna do it. Sure. I mean, do they are they really gonna send a ticketer over here? Well, you know, if I come out and I don't have a car. Whew. That's what I said. I was like, long shot or okay if you come out and you don't have a car. No, I've had good juju. Okay. I'm a good person. Right, I feel like we're tempting fate. Like we have already had a No, good, a we car. are not the first people to do it. We will say someone else was up there. They can get out. enough space to if, get out. If they know how to drive. If they don't, well, right, but if it is Baltimore. What if they're drunk and back yeah, in your vehicle? Like that's true. Okay, okay. We're good. As long as everybody like stays enough width in between yeah. each car. Let's like, just see how many other people start doing. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Saturday. This is our wild Saturday night. Woo! It was a wild day. I'm gonna go home.
I'm going to go home. You're I'm going to stay gonna go home. home. I'm going to drink a bunch of water. And I am going to probably watch. I have like a list of things I need to watch. Okay. I'm going to go home and go I to bed. watch the planet thing. The earth. <gasps> I cried a bunch. Yeah. Wild Saturday night over here at our time of the month. As always. As always. We will see you tomorrow. <laughs>